Hello everyone and welcome back to GAL. Today we're going to explore Adobe's newest update to Premiere Pro called Productions. Productions is an evolution of a shared project. It's essentially a special type of project folder which contains multiple Premiere Pro projects that you can edit simultaneously. To help explain this, here's a quick side-by-side -side of a standard Premiere Pro project panel and a production panel. Instead of bins, like in a project, Productions has folders. And instead of sequences, like in a project, Productions has project files. Since production acts similarly to a folder, the production panel actually reflects what is in that folder on your local shared storage or drive. So if you make an edit to the name of the project file in the production panel, you'll see that the change is also made on your disk and vice versa. If you make an update on your disk, the change is also reflected in the project panel. And so who is Productions for? While the Adobe team designed Productions for multiple editors who need to edit collaboratively on a production like a film or TV show, you can also use Productions by yourself to better organize and speed up projects with lots of media. By breaking up clips, sequences, and projects into smaller, tinier projects within a production, you can actually have faster open and save times to speed up your workflow. So how do you create a production? You can store production locally, but if you need other editors to access it, you actually need some type of shared storage solution. Below in my description box are options for shared storage solutions. I made a video on the Studio Network Solutions Evo Prodigy, so you can look into that. But you can also use consumer file syncing services like Dropbox or Google Drive. I'm currently using Drive for this production. So to create a production, first update your preferences to the following. Go to Preferences, then Media, and uncheck the following. Then from Preferences, go to Collaboration, and make sure that Enable Project Locking is checked, and enter in a username that others see when you open a project. Also from Window Workspaces, uncheck Import Workspaces from Projects. This will avoid workspace changes when opening projects from other editors. And it's still recommended to store your media cache files on your local drive for speed, so leave that the same. So then go to File, New, Production, and give it a name, and then you can choose your file path. I'm going to select my Premiere Production folders on my Google Drive, and I'll call this Production 1. And now you can see that a new production was opened, and from here we can make a new folder in this panel by clicking here and calling it whatever you like. I'll call it 01 Chapters. And then by clicking on the new project icon, I'll make a new project file for each chapter. Also go to the hamburger menu here and you can reveal the production in your finder if you're on a Mac or Explorer on your PC. You will see that within the production folder here that the chapter folders that I created with the three projects inside are now here on the disk. You'll also notice that there's a prod set file within the root folder of your productions folder. Do not open, move, or rename this file. The autosave is also saved in the same location as your production folder. And back inside the productions project here, you can of course add in existing Premiere Pro projects to the production. Just click on the hamburger menu and add project to production. Also, once your production is farther along, you will start to see some different icons in the panel. So let me go over what this all means. The green pen means that you can edit this project. A hollow outline icon means that it's not open and closed on your system. The red lock just means that somebody else is editing the project. The name here shows who is editing your project. You can still open this up to view it, but you cannot make any changes to it. And then as the production moves along, you can of course open up any of these projects and you'll see that they have their own project panels with their own sequences and media. And you can always click on media to reveal which project the media is in in case you need to copy it to another project. And that's pretty much it for setting up and using productions. And if you're looking for creative assets to share amongst your team or collaborators, I recommend subscribing to Envato Elements. For a small monthly fee, you can get unlimited mogurts, templates, music, sound effects, stock video to use within your production. And everyone on your team can log in and download the assets they need. And of course, they can add it to the productions folder so you can all share those assets. So using my affiliate link below, you can sign up for Envato Elements and start taking advantage of their unlimited assets. I've also linked to some of my favorite assets that I use in Premiere all the time. Lastly, Adobe Creative Cloud introduced a public beta 
for Adobe Creative Cloud subscribers. So from the desktop app, you can now go to a section called beta, and you can open up the latest version of Premiere to test out the new features and give the Adobe team feedback. So that's all for today, and leave a comment below if you have any specific questions about productions. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye!